On this episode of Hot Rod Horrors, I'm featuring a 1940 Willys gasser named Hemi Hurricane, and it's powered by one of the most highly sought after Hemi engines that Mopar ever produced. To give you a little backstory on how I came to know this car, we gotta go back to about 2006, and I went down to the Paradise Drag Strip nostalgia event, and it was just starting to kinda get built up at that time, and I saw this car sitting in the pits, and I was just immediately drawn to it because it was flawlessly restored. Beautiful paint quality. All the finishes were just perfect on this car. So, of course, I learned a little bit that day, and then a few years later, I learned a lot more because I approached the family and I ended up doing a photo shoot on this car for a magazine. Now, that magazine is called World of Rods, and it's gone now, but uh, at the time, I was doing some freelance work for them, and I shot the car there at the track, and eventually wrote the article, which required me to do a lot of research and uh, talk to the family and get a lot of those cool details from them. So really this was kind of my first attempt at documenting an old car, and it was definitely my first article on a historic race car. So, you know, this is kind of my stepping stone into what I'm doing today. To give you the full drag racing history on this 1940 Willys, we got to go back to 1964. That's when Frank Groves bought the car from A.J. Fowler. He gave $225 for this car, and he had full intentions of going drag racing with it. He wanted to set it up as an A-gas car, and he brought along a friend named Roger Swanson. Frank and Roger spent quite a bit of time on the chassis and suspension, and they really went all out on this car. The front suspension is mostly stock. It's got parallel leaf springs, a straight front axle, it does have little lift blocks to bring the front end up a little bit, uh, but the rear suspension is where it gets really tricky. It's got quarter elliptical leaf springs, which is basically a leaf spring that's been cut in half, and then it's got coilover shocks, long ladder bars, and it's all attached to a Chrysler eight and three quarter rear end. When they set up the rear suspension, they didn't use this exact rear end housing. That's where this story gets a little bit more interesting because the rear end housing transmission and engine came from a very special donor car. Around this time is when a third person gets involved with the build. That person was Lamar Bobo from Rome, Georgia. Everybody called him Bunky. He wants to inject some serious money into this car. He wants to make it a top of the food chain A-gas car. So he does something crazy. He calls up Mr. Norm in Chicago, Illinois, and he orders a brand new 1965 Dodge Coronet Hemi factory super stock car. Now this A990 car, they're incredibly rare. The, about 101 of them were built. And they were factory race cars. They were lightweight cars. They had aluminum heads, cross ram intake with two fours. They had lots and lots of tricks to make them lightweight. Uh, I mean, just incredible cars. And so he goes up there, buys the car, brings it home, immediately takes it apart, uses that engine transmission rear end in this 1940 Willy Scoop. The A990 cars were rated at 425 horsepower, which is probably a little below what they actually made, but that still wasn't good enough for this type of car. So they immediately started taking the engine apart. They sent the crankshaft to Howard's to add a half inch to the stroke. This is way before you could just call up Summit or Jegs and order a crankshaft. It ended up coming out to about 484 cubic inches. And obviously they worked on the heads a little bit. They put a 590 camshaft in it and they put the Hilburn fuel injection on there. And it ran on gasoline to run in the A-gas class. Behind the stroked Hemi engine is the original torque flight automatic transmission that was in the Dodge Coronet. Now it was sent off to Art Carr. He strengthened it, but there really wasn't a lot you could do as far as trick modifications. You know, there wasn't a lot of torque converter options or anything like that. And even back then, there wasn't a lot of shifter options. There wasn't fancy ratchet shifters and you know, lockout shifters and all that kind of stuff. So they ended up using an original push button shifter out of a Dodge. Basically, what you do is just push the button for drive or for whatever gear you want it to be in, and the transmission shifts. It's kind of a futuristic thing that Dodge came up with. You know, it worked pretty well in this race car. So if you're a Mopar guy, you're probably wondering, what happened to that A990 donor car? That's an iconic piece. It's super valuable, extremely rare. How could somebody just take that thing apart and then dispose of it? 
Well, that's where the story gets even more interesting because one night Bunky Bobo and Randy Payne were hanging out, having a good time, and they were rolling dice and making some bets here and there and passing some money around. Well, they ended up getting a little more serious and Bunky ended up losing that donor car. Of course, it didn't have the engine transmission rear end, but he lost that 65 Dodge Coronet A990 car and he lost it to Randy Payne, who was a notable Ford guy, drag racer back in the 60s and 70s, a real popular guy, but did not have a use for a Mopar. So he ended up selling that body to a local racer who put a 426 wedge motor in it and went racing. Now, I haven't been able to track down that car or figure out who may have owned it in the 60s and 70s, but that sounds like a really good episode of Hot Rod Hoarders in the future. So stay tuned, I might be able to track something down on that one. To make the car a little bit lighter, they took out all the street equipment that they could, and then they put a fiberglass front end on it, fiberglass doors, and a fiberglass deck lid, leaving only just the bare body being steel, and then replaced all the inner panels with aluminum to make it that much lighter. Up front, they installed a pair of magnesium American Torque Thrust wheels, 15 by four inch with some little skinny tires, and out back, they typically ran a pair of steel wheels that had been widened a little bit. Now, back then, it was kind of up in the air whether or not a magnesium or an aluminum or a steel wheel was best for the rear of the car. And in their case, they actually tried it two different ways, and the steel wheel performed better. So that's what they usually used. But when they restored this car, they wanted to give it kind of a more polished look. So they ended up going with these Americans on the front that are polished perfectly with the gold centers and American Racing 200S wheels on the back. Again, polished and restored beautifully. The guys spent most of 1964 and 1965 getting this car ready for the track. And, you know, they went and tested locally at tracks like Paradise Drag Strip, Southeastern International Dragway, which is down in Dallas, Georgia, uh, and other local tracks. There was lots in the Georgia and Alabama area where they were from. So they had plenty of options to go test this car, go race it a little bit locally, and the car was a great performer locally. It was early in 1966 when this car got its first big win, and that was at a NASCAR sanctioned event in Daytona, Florida. Yes, NASCAR sanctioned drag racing events in the 1960s, and you know, that obviously made these guys busy. They would race at all sorts of different tracks under different sanctioning bodies. Uh, but in the case of this type of car, you know, it would stay in the same class, like A-Gas was similar enough across the various sanctioning bodies to where they could run this car all over the place without making any serious changes. The only unfortunate part about that big win in Daytona was then the final round, Bunky was experiencing some traction issues and he zinged the RPMs way up on that Hemi engine and he hurt it pretty bad. And something like that can kind of devastate uh, otherwise low budget racing team. Obviously he spent big money to get this engine transmission rear end for this car and completely rebuilding it, that was gonna cost a lot. And around this time is kinda when Bunky had the opportunity to buy the whole car. So he bought out Frank's part of it and he rebuilt the engine and he went racing again. Uh, ultimately won again in Daytona the next year he actually won in two different classes. He won in A-Gas and in Competition Eliminator. So, you know, this car was still doing really well in 1967, but big changes were coming in drag racing around this time, and Bunky wanted to get in on it. So as Bunky continued racing this car in the 1967 season, instead of running in A-Gas, he actually set this car up to run in match races. And for the rest of that season, he ran the car on nitromethane. And he had Randy Scott help him tune the car and make sure it was going to survive all the abuse. Uh, but ultimately, the car was just wild with the nitro. I mean, it was all over the track, but it did allow him to gain nearly a full second ET. The best the car ever ran on gasoline was a 10.05 at 128 miles per hour. And then the best it ran on nitromethane was a 9.30 at 164 miles per hour almost a 40 mile an hour difference between the gasoline and nitro setups. So you can tell this thing was probably fighting some traction issues, but it was making some big power on the top end. And that's really kind of the transitional point uh, of this car's history was when he put the nitro engine in it, the car didn't handle well. So he bought a Logie chassis 
and a one-piece 68 Barracuda fiberglass body and the Hemi Hurricane II was born. So with the success of the Barracuda funny car, the old Willie's gasser sort of faded off into the distance. And Bunky even tried to sell it. He priced it for $350. And at the time, you know, it was kind of just a used up race car. It really wasn't a state of the art piece anymore because drag racing was changing quick in 67, 68. I mean, it was really moving along quickly. And this car just didn't bring the money. So since it didn't bring what he wanted, he actually pushed it into his barn and he just put it away and kind of forgot about it for a little while. And they actually brought it back out around 1970 and they put a 340 cubic inch motor out of a Dodge Challenger in there. The intention with that was to make this thing street legal and just drive it around and have fun with it. But that side project didn't really last very long. They eventually pushed it back in there and the car never saw the light of day again until about 2004. And that's when Bunky's son, Tony, talked him into pulling the thing out, going back through all the old parts, and putting this thing back together just like it used to be in the 60s. The timing was great on the restoration of this car because it allowed Bunky's two grandsons to get involved. It was just a really cool family project that included some old friends as well. So ultimately, they took the car all the way back apart. They took that 340 cubic inch engine out of it. The radical nitro burning Hemi was long gone but they did put a 426 Hemi back in this car. They dressed it up just like it was in the 60s. Hilburn fuel injectors with the tall stacks, fender well headers, lots of cool vintage pieces on this thing, and it's finished perfectly. I mean, you can see the paint quality on every piece of this thing is just flawless. Speaking of paint, the color on this car is a custom mixed red, and the paint and bodywork was done by Larry Abernathy, and he did a killer job on this thing, making it straight, slick, then over the top of that beautiful paint is hand lettering with gold leaf done by Tommy Bollin. The restoration of the Hemi Hurricane Willys was finished in 2005 and they went everywhere with the car. They toured it around at events like the NHRA Hot Rod Reunion. They had opportunity to display it at the U.S. Nationals, all sorts of different nostalgia events. And then ultimately they put it in the International Motorsports Hall of Fame in Talladega, Alabama and it was on display there for quite a while. Unfortunately, Bunky passed away in 2016, but he left the car in good hands with his son, Tony. Tony was around back in the day. He traveled with his dad back in the 60s to the drag races, and you know, he knew the car from day one. And you know, he was also really kind of the guy in charge of getting this thing out of the barn and in charge of restoring it. And you know, he played a big part in that whole process. So obviously he's, the guy, he's the caretaker of this car, and he's really the one who has pushed this thing out into the public. He's put it out there for people to share their memories of it and to share old drag racing stories and to, you know, really uh, just bring back some great memories from the 1960s and put a smile on a lot of people's faces. So, you know, for me, that's what this is all about. I hope you've enjoyed following along with the history of the Hemi Hurricane Willys. I've got another new video coming up next Friday, so stay tuned. Thank you for watching.